Hello and welcome back to the final video for CHE 2064, where today our goal is going to be depicting some vapor liquid equilibrium phase diagrams for a binary mixture of benzene and toluene. And we're going to be talking about dew, dew temperature, dew uh, pressure, bubble temperature, bubble pressure. But before we talk about that, why benzene and toluene? Well, that's because they're in terms of a binary mixture, they're very ideal, and they interact minimally with each other, okay? And the we're going to derive these expressions on pretty elementary knowledge, ele elementary knowledge of general chemistry, and one new topic, which is Raoult's Law. So let's talk about that for a quick second. Raoult's Law, right here, basically says the mole fraction of a component in the liquid phase multiplied by its saturation vapor pressure, which by the way, we can get that from the Antoine equation, okay, which is only dependent on temperature. That's important for later. Okay? Is equal to is equal to the pressure multiplied by multiplied by the mole fraction of component one in the vapor phase. And this whole thing is equivalent to the partial pressure of said component. Okay, so let's start off really quickly with bubble pressure. What's a bubble pressure? Well, when you're heating or not so much heating, but when you have the correct conditions for a bubble to form, okay, given a temperature, what pressure will a bubble form? Well, a bubble will form when the pressure, the partial pressure of the binary mixture or the partial pressure of one component is equal to that of the environment, okay? So therefore, we can say that P1, let's see, P has to equal the mole fraction of the liquid phase of component 1 multiplied by the saturation vapor pressure of component 1 plus the mole fraction of component 2 multiplied by the saturation vapor pressure of component two, okay? This will equal your bubble pressure, okay? Bubble pressure, okay? By the way, from this, we can also find bubble temperature, right? Because for bubble temperature, you're given a known pressure, you're given a known pressure, and you're asked to find what temperature will a bubble form. Well, you can use this because the saturation vapor pressures based on Antoine's equation is completely dependent on temperature, okay? Therefore, you can, we'll see this in Python, you can set this equal, you can set this equal to the pressure that you're given and then use the root solver for solve for a temperature t which satisfies that expression then you find bubble pressure and bubble temperature right mm -hmm. okay so dew pressure and dew temperature is a little bit more involved but still runs on very simple logic and the first of which being that the sum oh wow that's a really bad sigma <laughs> the sum of mole fractions of component i is equal to one when that's very obvious right the sum of any set of mole fraction is, is always equal to one that's in the definition of a mole fraction well that's obvious what may not be so obvious is how to apply it to find our dew pressure let's bring in Rhodes law okay Rhodes law states that the the mole fraction of component i in the liquid phase multiplied by the saturation pressure of uh component i is equal to the mole fraction in the, of component I in the vapor phase multiplied by pressure. And this, don't forget, this whole expression that I just bracketed means vapor pressure, partial pressure, sorry, partial pressure, right? Okay, let's talk about it. You can say that, okay, well, the sum is equal to the sum of both sides. Then what do you have? You have the sum of component i and you bring you're able to bring that divide by both sides 
using algebra to bring that to the to do the other side. So you say that the sum of a uh, mole fraction of in the liquid phase of component I is equal to the sum of mole fraction in the vapor phase of component I multiplied by the pressure over the saturation vapor pressure. Okay? Here, using our knowledge that the sum of any mole fraction is equal to 1, we can say that, okay, 1 equals this pressure never changes, right? It's a constant, so you pull it outside of the summation of notation, P multiplied by the sum of mole fraction of component I over the saturation vapor pressure of component I is equal to 1. That's our expression. This is particularly useful because this pressure in the equation is our dew pressure, okay? Dew pressure. By the way, I forgot. I t entirely forgot to explain the physical meaning of dew pressure. Um, remember that, okay, so for, I wish I had a syringe to demonstrate this because you can actually see this, but for bubble pressure, bubble pressure, you're at some, at a constant temperature that we know, at some pressure, we pull a vacuum on a container, you're binary mixture will start bubbling. Where the bur first bubble forms, that's the exact pressure. That's your bubble pressure. For dew, that's the entire opposite. Imagine you have a, a container of a binary mixture of pure binary vapor, meaning no air, no water vapor, just pure vaporous toluene and benzene, okay? And you'll push on the syringe to a point, to a pressure at a constant temperature where a first dew droplet of dew forms that's your dew pressure okay this is what this is okay this is what this is and algebraically it's very simple your dew pressure is equal to the reciprocal of the sum of your mole fraction of component i in the vapor phase over the saturation vapor pressure of component i and there you go we have our two mathematical equations that we honestly that's the only thing you need Okay, and similarly to bubble temperature, let me write this down. So we found this is the expression for dew pressure. Okay, similarly for uh, bubble temperature, dew temperature, we can solve by using root once again. Why? We have an expression for bubble pressure, uh, for dew pressure. And for the dew temperature, we are given what pressure is. So we say that we will equate this expression equal to equal to the given pressure, okay? This entire expression is reliant on a single independent variable, that being temperature, right? And you might say, oh, where's temperature? I don't see temperature in this expression at all. It's hidden. It's hidden in here, Antoine's equation, which once again is dependent entirely on temperature. So using root solver, we can say that, okay, we want to, we want to minimize the pressure, or actually this expression, minus pressure, has to equal zero. For what temperature will that satisfy that expression? Okay, let's hop into Python, and I'll demonstrate that. Okay, now that we have our, now that, okay, now that we're back in Python, we have our standard imports, right? We have, um, this is a more elegant way to get um, to copy the CHE tools in one line rather than a couple of them. And then we have numpy and we want to, as mentioned before, we want to use root from scipy to optimize. And then we have plot, plotly, because we want to plot our um, binary mixture liquid vapor phase, phase diagram, right? Um, make sure my phone is on silent. There we go. Okay, so let's start with first building our functions for bubble pressure, bubble temperature, uh, dew pressure, dew temperature, so for us to use in order to plot. So let's start with bubble pressure. What's bubble pressure want? Well, bubble pressure will want the mole fraction of the uh, component in the liquid phase for a given temperature. It calculates a it calculates a uh, pressure, right? So define. And what does it return? Well, it returns the the sum the sum 
of oh where is it where is it it returns the sum of the mole fraction of the liquid phase multiplied by the saturation vapor pressure for a given temperature right okay simple as that what about bubble temperature bubble temperature is dependent on the function is dependent on bubble pressure where for a the mole fraction of a component in the liquid phase and it also wants we are also given a pressure okay what does it return well it's going to return the solution of the root function right and what does the root function require remember that the root function requires a function okay which it always wants in this form a function with a vector of unknowns and in this case our unknown is our temperature right okay and it returns the difference of the pressure given and the bubble pressure okay uh bubble pressure for the mole fraction in the liquid phase and a given temperature okay in this case the temperature is our guess okay uh not our guess sorry the temperature is what we are solving for and then root what does root want well it takes in the equation okay and then the a guess and in this case a reasonable guess would be i don't know room temperature in kelvin right there we have that next we want do do what let's start with do pressure that's the most simple calculation right and in this time for do pressure we start with y y always represents the mole fraction of a given component in the vapor phase for dew pressure you're given temperature solving for pressure right and what do we return and let me consult what we just wrote down it returns the the calculation is the reciprocal of the sum of the mole fraction in the vapor phase divided by the saturation vapor pressure for a given temperature okay and much in the same vein the dew temperature the dew temperature for a given pressure is very similar to how we do how we calculate the bubble temperature okay using it returns the solution oh i just realized remember the root root spits out a whole dictionary we don't want that we want just the solution which is an array so we want the first value in the uh array of solutions okay and for dew temperature we're returning the solution of the root and in order to use the root we need to define a function for the root to solve okay with a vector of unknowns in this case it's a one-dimensional vector which represents temperature so we unpack that really quick and what does this return it will want to return it will want to return the difference between the given pressure and and the dew pressure the dew pressure for a component y for uh, and temperature okay remember the temperature is what the root solver is solving for okay we return root of the equation and once again room temperature in kelvin is a rather reasonable guess in the context okay let's get on with plotting but before we do so we have to designate a pressure and a temperature for which we're plotting vapor phase diagrams for okay and that's uh from the github the github example code we defined our uh, example temperature as 120 degrees Celsius and example pressure as 150,000 pascals. Okay, and first thing I'm going to do is well, we need an independent variable to plot against, and that independent variable is going to be well, it's not always going to be x, x being our um, mole fraction in the liquid phase, because we also have dew pressure, dew temperature, which is y, also y being the mole fraction in the um, vapor phase the meaning of them the meaning of each one is different so i don't want to call y x and y but the numbers for which we are plotting is the same so i'm making an arbitrary arbitrary name z1 for an object i'm calling 
lin uh, that I'm filling with a linearly spaced point, so np.lin space from 0 to 1, um, 0 to 1 mole fraction, right? And I want 11.17 then, okay? So then the component 2 is simply the opposite, so minus that, okay? Z is being arbitrary because it can either be x or y, either be the mole fraction in the liquid or the mole fraction in the uh, vapor. Okay, so let's get on with the first one, so bubble pressure. So we want to uh, create a list for which we want to plot, and it's going to equal, well, what's the calculation for bubble pressure? It's the sum of the, the sum of the mole fraction of each component multiplied by its saturation vapor pressure. So instead of doing p.p vap every time, let's just let's define a object. Saturation vapor pressure is equal to the vapor pressure at temperature T. Okay, so this is going to equal x um, z1. Okay, z well, maybe I want to illustrate it. Okay, so in this case, maybe I'll put this I'll put this in a different different block. Okay, this is for this is for bubble pressure. In this case, for bubble pressure, I'm I'm utilizing the mole fraction in the liquid phase. Okay x1 equals what? x1 equals z1. It's arbitrary. It's arbitrary. x2 equals z2. Okay? So the list, bubble p list, bubble pressure list is equal to the calculation for bubble pressure, which is the mole fraction in the liquid phase of component 1 multiplied by the saturation vapor pressure of said component plus the mole fraction of component Two in the liquid phase multiplied by the saturation vapor pressure of said component as well. Let's try that. So let's try. It. Let's plot it. See what it looks like. And uh, we we're going to want two plots there. Okay. So I'm gonna make two subplots. So I want one row. No. Yes, one row and two columns. Okay. Okay. So then fig.add scatter where x is equal to that and y is equal to the bubble pressure list. Okay? Bubble pressure list. And I want this in the first row and the first column. And that's pretty boring, right? But it's, it is what we want to see. We'll get more inter interesting as you plot more things. So let's get going. Let's get on with it. Let so over here, the the y-axis is pressure, okay? And down here, the x-axis is either, either for bubble pressure, it's x, that being the mole fraction in the liquid phase, or y, mole fraction in the um, mole fraction in the vapor phase. Okay, so let's get on with calculating um, plotting dew pressure, the dew pressure curve. Let's do that. So dew pressure list for plotting purposes. Oops. Make it an empty list, okay? So I'm going I'm actually going to use the for loop here. So for 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 y for the um, mole fraction of component one in the vapor phase for every y in this list, okay? I want to also calculate y2 equals 1 minus y1, okay? And I want to append to this list because I want to do a calculation each time and append it, right? Append. And what calculation do I want to do? Well, I want to do the dew pressure, but I don't want to write out the whole thing again where I already made a function for this, okay? And it takes the first argument it takes in is the components. So we actually want to make a tuple of our two uh, our two components, the mole fraction and the vapor phase, y1, y2. Okay. The second argument uh, do pressure is asking for is temperature. Okay. So let's do that and let's plot it. Check it out. and do pressure list. 
Ooh, that's not what we want to see. Let's double check. Let's double check. Dew pressure is equal to the reciprocal of the sum of component y divided by divided by saturation vapor pressure. Is that correct? Is that correct? Well, it appears that's what it's supposed to be. Um, what am I? Am I missing something? Oh, that's why. Uh, syntax should be syntax. The syntax is very important. That's more like it. That's more like it. So moving on, let's start with our temperature, our temperature phase diagram. Okay. And it's much in the same vein. Do you, uh, let's start with bubble. Bubble temperature list, an empty list. So for each, for remember for bubble, we're working with, we're assuming a container with pure, only liquid, only liquid of a binary mixture. So we want X this time, X being the mole fraction of the liquid phase. So for every X in the arbitrary Z, I want to also define X2 as one minus X1. Okay, and I want to append, make a calculation each time and append it to our empty list. Okay, and what calculation do I want to do? I want to calculate the bubble temperature, which I have a function for. The first argument it's asking for, for bubble temperature, is the mole fraction of each component in the liquid phase. So, make another tuple. This time, be wary of, be wary of your um, syntax, and throw in component one and component two. Okay. The second argument it is asking for is pressure for a given pressure. Okay, so let's check that. We're building our we're building our vapor phase diagrams. Okay, so for this time it's bubble temperature. Okay, and we're throwing this in the second plot. Ooh. What does it not like? Uh, sometimes this happens. I have absolutely no idea why. Oh, I know why. It's because it's because I make a new for loop and it's reusing the variable. So it's actually better to just use uh, z1 every time because I don't touch I don't touch that variable z1. Okay, much better. And there we go. Okay, one more to go. This time it's the uh, dew temperature list, the dew temperature that we're plotting. Okay, so for, remember this time dew, it's a container of our binary mixture of pure vapor. Okay, so for y1 and z1, okay, and I also define the um, mole fraction in the vapor phase of component 2. Okay, and I want to append once again, for calculate it for each value of y1 and y2 and append it to my list for plotting purposes. So do temperature list append and I'm using the do temperature function I used earlier and it's asking for it's asking for the mole fraction in the vapor phase. Okay? Um, try not to get lost here. Okay? And I once again I'm assembling a tuple, so np dot array. Okay np.array for y1 for the components 1 and 2, okay? And the second argument that the dew temperature calculation is asking for is for a pressure, okay? And the last one. Column through, oh, two, keep that the same. And this time, we're looking for dew temperature list, the list of dew temperatures. And there we go. We now have plotted our vapor phase diagrams for a binary mixture for dew temperature, dew pressure, uh, bubble pressure, and bubble temperature. On the left-hand side, you can see the very high values. It correlates to Pascal's. It's our pressure diagram. And on the right-hand side, it's something that you would expect of Kelvin, so our temperature. Okay, well, now that 
we have our dew point and bubble point all calculated out and mapped out. Let's get on with the Ratchford Rice Flash calculations, okay? And where is this applicable? It's applicable for, let's say we have a situation of, this is called a flash drum, okay? Where you have a flow rate, F, mole flow rate, in this case, for this problem, it's 10 moles per second, okay? Um, with some composition, we're calling this ZI, okay? It goes into the flash drum, and out comes a liquid flow rate with some component, some um, some mixture of components, and a vapor flow rate with some mixture of components, okay? And we're, for, if this, this flash calculation is the simplest, so it's for a given pressure and temperature, the flow rate going in is given as well as its composition. And you would be asked to find, well, what's my flow rate? What's my vapor flow rate? What's my liquid flow rate? And what are their compositions? In principle, the Ratchard Rice calculation works on very simple logic. And when I list it out, it's very obvious, okay? And the first of which being, well, okay, it's mass balance, easy peasy, conservation of mass. And it's that the flow rate, the flow rate of the input is equal to the sum of the vapor and liquid flow rate, okay? What goes in must goes out. Uh, second is something that's not obvious, but it's a very common practice in chemical engineering textbooks. You'll see it everywhere for any binary mixture. And we'd say that it's, it's particularly useful because we say that Ki, we're calling this Ki, is equal to the ratio of the mole fraction in the vapor phase and the mole fraction in the liquid phase, okay? And by using the Ratchford Rice, uh, sorry, not Ratchford Rice, the, by using the Raoult's law, Raoult's law, we can turn this into a ratio of the saturation vapor pressure over the pressure. And this is particularly useful. Why? Because we're given pressure, and the saturation vapor pressure is entirely dependent on T, temperature, and we are also given temperature. So we're given this, we know Ki, therefore we know the ratio of the mole fraction in the vapor phase and the mole fraction in the liquid phase. The final and the final principle in ultimate common sense is that the sum, the sum of the mole fraction of the liquid phase minus the sum of mole fraction in the vapor phase is equal to zero. Okay? Oh, by the way, these should be I. Okay? And in this case, it's a binary mixture, so it's I equals one to two. Okay? So let's get started by moving moving these equations around okay and the goal is that well what do we have right now we have we have three unknown uh, sorry four unknowns i can count i swear and three unknown equations that's a lot okay we can make this much nicer by manipulating these equations and plugging them into each other and hopefully getting into a situation where hey we only have one unknown left and that'll be particularly useful so let's get started the first of which saying is using this this piece of logic here and saying that well okay the fl the ma the flow rate multiplied by the composition is equal to the flow rate of the vapor vapor flow multiplied by the mole fraction of the vapor phase plus the liquid flow multiplied by the mole fraction of the liquid phase Okay, easy peasy. And we can use we can use this expression right here to go ahead and eliminate one variable. Let's let's keep let's keep xi around. Okay. And how do we do that? Well, we say that we say that by using this expression here, we say that ki or sorry, we say that yi is equal to ki times xi. We plug that in, we get F Z I is equal to V K I X I plus L X I. Okay. And at this point, you might want to factor out X I, mole fraction in the liquid phase. Okay. So F Z I is equal to 
V K I plus L quantity multiplied by X I. Um, we can we can further eliminate here by saying that well we can say that from here L is equal to F minus V okay in minus the vapor flow rate just simple algebra we can plug that in plug that into this expression where F ZI is equal to V KI plus F minus V multiplied by the quantity XI okay so by the way let's start with the other manipulations okay and you'll see why it's obvious this should this should this is I'm gonna to prove to you that this is not something you have to memorize it's something that can reveal itself okay so we're gonna do the same thing here using we're gonna replace the mole fraction in the vapor phase with the mole fraction in the liquid phase so we say that the sum of the mole fraction in the liquid phase minus ki xi is equal to zero you look at this and you might be tempted to factor once again right so xi 1 minus ki is equal to zero okay you look at this you look over here what do you see you see one unknown okay over here you also see this so you might be tempted to manipulate this we're going to call this equation two and calling this equation one you might be tempted to manipulate it so that we can plug it into equation one and get uh, get with one equation okay and we can get it in a convenient way where we end up with one equation with one unknown which is super simple to solve simple for python anyway well let's get on with it okay so we say that we want to divide this whole expression over so xi equals f multiplied by zi over v ki plus f minus v okay i don't i don't need the parentheses anymore and what do you see here you see f in both the numerator and denominator you might be tempted we've done this before we've done this before in, in the derivation for the cubic equation of state so it's no surprise that we want to divide by f on both the numerator and denominator okay so we say that xi is now equal to the com composition of the flow going in over uh we have to be careful with my, the algebra here it's not my strong seat if i'm being honest um v hold on We're moving stuff around f over f is one right one plus v over f okay and i'm factoring this out okay v over f and we wind up with k i minus one okay and there we go so we can then plug this into this expression and you'll see why in just a second we say that the sum of 1 minus ki over over 1 plus v over f ki minus 1 the sum from i equals 1 to 2 for a binary because it's a binary mixture has to equal 0 okay and there you go this is the derivation for the rashford rice equation and you can see why this is particularly useful why we've gone from a situation where we have four unknowns and three equations to one equation and a rather useful 
unknown, V over F. V over F is the ratio of the flow rate of the vapor, the vapor flow rate, over the flow rate of the input. That's a rather useful. This is only one unknown. Because from that unknown, we can then solve for, well, we can solve for the rest. It's just an arbitrary matter to find V and L. And for Xi, we have an expression for that. And then from that, the mole fraction in the uh, vapor phase is very arbitrary, right? And you look at this, you look at this and you might think to yourself, well, before Python, how, would, how, how might a chemical engineer do this? Well, a chemical engineer, before the advent of um, Python and computers for that matter, would call this, call this omega, okay? And they would graph, graph omega on the y axis and v over f on the x. And you might notice, well, this equals zero. That looks familiar. You've seen that almost all of your life in algebra. That is a root. Wherever it crosses the x-axis, that would be your solution. Well, that's a good segue to what we're about to do. It's a root. So therefore, we can use uh, scipy.optimize.root in Python to solve for our independent variable. What do we have? We have an expression that's equal to zero. That's what that's the bread and butter of root, right? And we have a one. Well, root can handle more than one, but we, we do have one independent variable. So what root's going to do, it's going to solve for said independent variable, which satisfies this expression, okay? So why don't we hop into Python and code it out? Okay, now we're back in Python. What we have here are our knowns for the given problem in Canvas, right? We have a, remember for a Rashford Rice calculation, for a flash calculation, we have a given pressure and temperature, a given moles of feed. Did I? I believe I, I said it wrong. Man. I don't think I meant to say flow rate for the past derivation. I meant I should have meant to say moles, only moles. Okay, well, we have 10 moles of feed, 10 moles of feed, and a composition, the composition for the moles, for the feed going in. Okay, so let's get started. We The goal of this is to make a equation for root to solve, right? And root, what does root always want? Oops. Oh, by the way. Um, these, this is stuff that I can't remember in my head, but all I did here is, um, uh, format, format the graphs to be a little nicer, add some lines, add some lines for us to clearly see, clearly see what the values are, as well as a, uh, axis labels and a overall label for the chart. That looks rather nice, right? That's, that's besides the point. So what does, what does a root function wants? It wants a... Python function, which has a vector of unknowns, okay, and the unknown in this case is uh, the unknown is v, v over f, okay, and I don't want to do that because Python sees this as an operator. It cannot be, it cannot be a variable name. So I'm calling that vf, okay. Remember that this is actually v over f, not v times f and unpack that from the vector, okay? And what is what should this be returning? Well, it should return, remember the final derivation that we landed on is the sum, the sum of, the sum of the composition of the feed going in multiplied by k minus 1. By the way, we did not define k yet. Let's go ahead and do that really quick. What's k equal to? Well, k, remember, is equal to the saturation vapor pressure for a given, by the way, I should, in order for this to work, I should run all over the given pressure, okay? Oops, um, P, oh, that's right, that's no such thing, it should be P vapor pressure, saturation vapor pressure, 
multiplied by k minus 1. Okay? And this should be quantity over 1 plus vf, the independent variable that root will be solving for, k minus 1. So let's go ahead and try that. Root, um, Rashford Rice, and for a given, let's try that. For a given guess, Let's see if it works. K is not defined. That's because it should be uppercase. Okay, solution converged, and it is negative. That is because I am not wary of my parentheses. Okay, try again. And that's more like it. 0 0.54. So from there, from there, let's go ahead and calculate all of our unknowns. Remember the original the original question was asking for asking for our uh, moles of vapor. Well, how do I find that? Moles of vapor should equal to moles of vapor should equal to V uh, VF times F, right? F is known. VF is not defined. Oh, that's because I have to VF equals the root and then pull the solution out of the dictionary. There we go. Okay, print. Okay, let's okay, let's see if I can get fancy with F strings. I haven't practiced this before, but let's see. Um, moles of vapor equals uh v am i doing this right is that right no invalid syntax do i have to put this on the outside oh there it is awesome 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 i know my syntax okay um then then third second thing it's asking for is the moles of liquid well moles of liquid is very simply equal to F minus the moles of the input minus the moles of the vapor. Okay, so then this moles of liquid should be equal to that. Easy peasy. How about the mole fraction of the liquid phase, the liquid phase. Well, in this case, it's not so much a phase as it is a flow, the liquid flow. Let's go ahead and do that. The calculation for that, remember, was equation two from, re from one. Well, am I recording? Okay, good. Good, good, good. Uh, the, mo the calculation for that was simply the equation two that we derived previously, which is z over z over the quantity 1 1 plus vf multiplied by k minus 1 right uh, k is not defined that's because it should be uppercase I call it uppercase so let's go ahead and print that in this case it's mole fraction or it's not mole fraction it's the com position of the liquid liquid flow is equal to x well there you go look at that and then y is simply equal to simply equal to k times oh capital k times x and then we have the composition of vapor flow and there we have it all calculated up using the Rashford rice method we've done the flash calculation for this problem for a given pressure and temperature and a given composition and a given moles of feed, we were able to calculate four unknowns. 
the moles of vapor, moles of liquid, and the composition of each. Okay, next thing we're gonna next and last thing we're going to talk about is the lever rule. And for that, we're gonna move back to the iPad. So I'll see you over there. So now we're back on the iPad, we can start talking about the lever rule and deriving it. Okay? So for the lever rule, what we're interested in is okay, for the Z, for a given given composition of the flow rate in Z. Oops, ooh, erased are way too big. What's the composition inside? We have vapor here, we have liquid here. We want to know what's in here, okay? Or we do know, but we, we want to see what the relationship is like. So let's get on, let's get on with it. We have over here would be our composition of the vapor flow. Over here would be the composition of our liquid flow, okay? So let us, let, let us, start our derivation and it's very basic very basic knowledge okay and it's that the moles of the flow in is equal to the moles of the vapor out plus moles of the liquid out okay basic basic conservation of mass right and we say that it also holds true given if we multiply each by its respective composition as well we also would like to replace replace F with only terms of vapor and liquid. So vapor plus liquid multiplied by its composition is equal to the same. Okay. The natural thing to do from here is to distribute distribute the composition Z. V. Oh dear. V z plus l so on and so forth okay and the next natural thing to do would be to gather everything on the same side right so let's go ahead and do that we have Okay, maybe a space up too far away. The next natural thing to do from here would be to factor. I hope you can see where this is going and how it relates to the graph. Okay, so this is particularly useful. Why? We can rewrite this as a ratio, right? And there we go. Easy as that. Nothing but simple algebra. And we've derived our expression for the lever rule. What does the lever rule say? We, well, it says that the ratio, the ratio of vapor to liquid is equal to this expression. That expression is particularly useful. Let's go back to our graph. What's this? What's the, what would you describe the distance between these two points to be? It would be yi minus zi. Does that familiar? Look familiar to you? How about how about here? The distance between this. You see where I'm going with this? It's zi minus xi. Oh dear. That's that's an i. Xi. Look familiar? Just from the distance of the points, we can determine the ratio of vapor to liquid. And let me quickly demonstrate why it's called lever rule. You can see how if we move up this way, it changes. It can change, right? It's like a seesaw. If you push, if you push on one side, if you push on one side, the other side will want to go up. Same thing here. If you push, if you move the point this way, if you move the point this way, 
then what what if you move the point this way sorry if you move the point this way this term gets smaller this term gets smaller therefore this the ratio goes up it bears a physical physical resemblance to a lever a fulcrum or a seesaw so therefore this expression is called the lever rule well with that derived and demonstrated this concludes the video for homework six and therefore concludes uh the coursework for ch 2064 thank you and have a good day